This is called intellectual dishonesty. In any real scientific community, you can be banned for this. But before I talk about that, I want to uh, talk about fractals for a moment uh, as they're understood in orthodox mathematics because the idea of fractals will serve as a basis for much of what I'm going to talk about. Fractals are technically defined as uh, curves with a dimension greater than one and less than two, or surfaces with a dimension greater than two and less than three, none of which need concern us. What's important to know about fractals is that they have the peculiar property of uh, presenting the same appearance at all scales. Uh, an example of a fractal in nature or a fractal-like phenomenon would be a mountain range which when you get up to it and examine small pieces of rock that are sloughing off the face of the cliff and hold one up against the light, you discover that the edge of the small fragment of rock and the edge of the mountain range are in fact the same thing. And at first this doesn't appear startling because you say, well, the mountain is made of this stuff, this small boulder is made of this stuff, and it simply fractures the same way. But actually, a number of issues are being touched on uh, in this phenomenon. First of all, when you begin analyzing nature, you discover that uh, many, many forms of phenomena are fractal. Uh, coastlines, islands, uh, the way processes condense, the way solids condense out of liquids, for example, or something like that. There are many kinds of processes where uh, a single process is reflected and refracted at many levels of magnitude so that uh, the whole and its parts and many levels within the whole composed of its parts all have the same uh, structure. Okay, so you get the drift of what fractals are. I want to uh, hold to ideas. This is a think-along lecture, by the way, and you're free to think along at any point that you feel so moved to do so. I'm just giving y'all a run through a um, flat earth cosmology. Here you can see Nud and Gale right here, and you can compare that to the Hebrew cosmos. You can see everyone was on the same page that we were in an enclosed system. You can see everyone was on the same page that we were in an enclosed system. Here you can see Nud and Gale right here. And you can compare that to the Hebrew cosmos. You can see everyone was on the same page that we were in an enclosed system. Now, this brother also said that all ancient civilizations knew that the earth was flat. Now, that's a blanket statement that is very incorrect. This was called a cosmic egg and don't no damn animal in nature live on the outside of its egg. As above, so below. The life is on the inside of the egg. Now, as we move on, here's comedic cosmology. This is not no damn solar system. This is nut and gap. This is an enclosed life system. And the guys you see on the outside represent those waters above that you see in the Hebrew cosmos. That's why they own boats. Those are the wa waters of your next mama. The ancestors believe in reincarnation. Their cosmology was tied to their afterlife. So those waters above were surfed by these guys on a boat that you see here. So the Hebrew cosmos line up with, line up with the comedic cosmos, enclosed system, enclosed system. So the Hebrew cosmos line up with, line up with the comedic cosmos, enclosed system. I'm gonna go to two civilizations. For one, I'm gonna go to Egypt, okay? I'm gonna go to Egypt first, okay? Now, boom, here's Egypt. Now you see this brother, he used Newt, OK, as you can see here in this picture at the bottom right. And he said that Newt represented the dome, but that's his own interpretation. He used Newt. OK, as you can see here in this picture at the bottom right. And he said that Newt represented the dome, 
But that's his own interpretation. But that's his own interpretation because Nuke represents the galaxy. If you look at this picture right here above Nuke, where it, it, that, that's right above this Egyptian depiction, you see a picture of the Milky Way galaxy, which is actually curving over just like the body of Newt. And so why is this important? Flat earthers are you are looking at depictions on the wall and putting their own personal interpretations behind them without any scientific proofs, without any scientific proofs. And so why is this important? Flat earthers are you are looking at depictions on the wall and putting their own personal interpretations behind them without any scientific proofs. And this is why science is important, because anybody can look at a picture and say what they want it to mean, because if we're talking about observations, it would be easy for us to go outside, look at the universe curving under. Look at the Milky Way galaxy, excuse me, curving, understanding that the ancestors seen that and depicted that on a wall. Not on the surface of it, they flipped us inside out. If you look at Shu in the middle, you can see two birds in between that represent the sun and moon, and he represent the atmosphere in between them. You can see the same thing here in the Hebrew cosmos: sun, moon, atmosphere in between them, separated by the pole, because that's the pole that balances the polarity. Sun and moon both come from womb. So that's the divine opening right there, the vault of heaven. Rainbows prove that we live in an enclosed system. Light reveals the shape of its container. Look at the pictures in front of you and you can see how that worked. This is called science, goddammit. I don't mind being laughed at for knowing that I'm on a flat plane. I don't mind being laughed at for knowing that I'm on a flat plane. I don't mind being laughed at for knowing that I'm on a flat plane. We live inside of an enclosed system. All of the ancients around the world had flat earth cosmology. You can see it in front of you now. We live inside of an enclosed system. All of the ancients around the world had flat earth cosmology. All of the ancients around the world had flat earth cosmology. You can see it in front of you now. It was Copernicus and Ptolemy that came with the doggone globe. People saying that it's a globe, but is, is it really? Is it a path or is it an ob oblate spheroid? I don't have no proof that it's a globe. All around the earth, just like you see in this picture, everyone had flat earth cosmology. All around the earth, just like you see in this picture, everyone had flat earth cosmology. All around the earth, just like you see in this picture, everyone had flat earth cosmology. So the globe is new. You can't find a globe in Kemet or a solar system. Nudengab ain't a solar system. You don't have to accept it, but it's flat earth truth. He also said all ancient civilizations, okay? He said all. He didn't say just Egypt. And so I'm going to go to another ancient civilization that understood that the earth was not flat and the sun was not in here with us. If you look at the Sumerians right here, okay, you clearly see them depicting the sun with the earth outside the motherfucking, uh, I mean, with the sun outside the earth's atmosphere. Here it go. Wait, let me go back to it. Damn it, I lost it. Here it go. Boom. You see, okay, Inky, Enlil, and I knew, and you see right here between Inky and Enlil, you see the sun with the planets outside of the sun. You don't see the sun inside the Earth's atmosphere. Now let's zoom in. You see the sun, and you see the Earth right here. And so I don't know what the fuck kind of research is being done to where statements like that can just be made for somebody to just say all the ancient civilizations had that understanding because that's not true. And so since we can understand that, okay, I want to make one more point on ancient Egypt before I before I uh, go on to my next point, because we cannot allow, you know, it just any and everything, you know, to just be said. Now, when you look at Egypt, okay, you see the sun going into, okay, the mouth of Newt, which is the universe, and coming out of the womb, being born again. And so why is this important? You see the ancestors clearly put the goddamn stars inside of Newt, which is the universe. What, and you see that the stars are outside of where they exist. And you see that they made sure they also put the sun outside of where they exist, which is in the universe. And so I don't see how somebody can look at this and try to flip this, flip the ancestors understanding to their own agenda when the ancestors clearly depicted the sun outside of the universe. 
the Sumerians clearly depicted the sun outside in the universe. And so how can somebody get on here and just make a blanket, st a blanket statement such as all of the ancients thought the goddamn earth was flat and the sun was in here with us because they clearly put it on the walls in opposition to that statement. Now, let me keep continuing on. OK. OK, here we go. All of the ancients around the world. OK, boom. Shit, I didn't hit my points. Time to get it on. Young Pharaoh is a little bitty boy. He never refuted any of my arguments during a debate. That man couldn't refute none of the facts that I said in that debate. He know he lost. He didn't show up prepared. Well, I